we're looking here at uh, Carbondale, Colorado. It's in the uh, Roaring Fork Valley. Uh, Carbondale is home to uh, Richard McIntyre, one of the owners of Flying Dog, also growing up place of yours truly. Uh, went to high school, played football on that little field there. I, I might have fornicated with a girlfriend of mine at the time. And uh, I think it was, I said 50 yard line originally, actually I think it was in uh, the uh, north end zone there, closer to the goal post. The Flying Dog Ranch is about half mile up the highway here. We're gonna uh, go take a left up a little road called Prince Creek. And uh, it's pretty much straight this way, like if you drove into the mountain there. You were telling me yesterday how you met through farming. So why don't you uh, let everybody know how, how that whole thing went down. George is driving around his ranch with a keg of Coors in the back of his 47 Willys Jeep. And I was spending my entire paycheck, $240 a month on beer, so kind of decided it might be a good time to start our own source. He's just damn thirsty as all it was. <laughs> so anyhow, I got to know George well over a period of years and became good friends and ended up uh, getting an opportunity to buy this place after he divorced his second wife. Right now, we're at 225 acres, goes across the Crystal River, out that way, all those fields. Nice spot, good ground. Old potato, potato ground. Yeah, George's second wife, she used to hang around here bare naked most of the time. Not one of the most attractive women. Who... How are tits? No, I did, couldn't look. She kind of hooked up with the, uh, the locksmith one night, and I squealed like a stuck pig. and said, George, you know, uh, <laughs> your wife's down here with the locksmith. So you replaced George's wife? Basically did, then found him a new one. <laughs> one that actually liked me. <laughs> There's some cattle stories down here in the early days of the hippie cattle ranch we were, and then we got into the high-end cattle business. We were selling uh, em frozen embryos and semen all over the world. Oh. I was a cum catcher. <laughs> you, were, uh, yeah. you guys were sperm peddlers. I was the cum catcher, yeah. I had my little net with a little beaker inside it. <laughs> the one you're not going to want to answer. <laughs> the hollow subject that is road dogs. In the 70s, it seemed like, it seemed to me at least, like it was, uh, it wasn't illegal to be involved in, in uh, imbibing and distributing marijuana. They told me one day that I'd forgotten to pay my taxes on selling marijuana, and I shit, I didn't know about any taxes. I, I didn't know what they, didn't know there was a tax on marijuana sales. I had to go to with a bunch of white collar guys and play tennis and basketball for three months, and so uh, thus I became the road dog. We've both uh, now leveraged our ranches to continue this kind of a flim flam idea of, uh, of a brew pub. It, it started out as kind of an off the cuff brew pub in Aspen, Colorado, the first brewery in a hundred years in, in Aspen. I hope everybody at the brewery picks up on, you know, the non-conformist attitude and the rebellious nature of the, uh, of the owners and uh, I think we've created a really fun and uh, hopefully really soon profitable little company. Oh. <laughs> okay, end of interview for today. Nice. Go good.